And I want to actually start by saying that it's very uh, re regrettable to note that the Constitution, as we speak, clearly articulates for the framework of the two-third gender rule. But as Parliament sits uh, now, uh, more specific at National Assembly, we've not been able to achieve the two-third gender rule. As a coalition, Kenya Kwanza, uh, led by our party leader, none other than Dr. William Ruto, uh, we want to state that uh, we are committed and uh, as, a, as a party in terms of championing and promoting the realization of women inclusion and effective participation in um, every sphere of national endeavors. We have recently also, as a coalition, uh, amended our um, structure in terms of ensuring that uh, we include uh, party leadership cadres that ensure we meet the two that gender rule uh, in our political uh, different uh, coalitions. Uh, further to this honorable chair, you note that currently uh, in the National Assembly we on a third on a on the one that we have 97, it should be 97, but we currently have 47 women reps, and we have less 50. But since we have 26 women uh, elected on uh, single constituencies, we still have a short of 24 women who are supposed to be in parliament. So uh, as, a, as, a, as a coalition, we want to uh, state that our, our proposal is uh, for this committee to uh, support in these uh, numbers uh, getting to the to that uh, agenda that uh, we all focus on. I want to state that uh, county assemblies have been able to achieve this through gender top-up. Senate, equally where I sit, we've been able to achieve it. But in national, national assembly, we've not been able to achieve this. Uh, finally, as a coalition, we're also not uh, forgetting our youth and people with uh, disability. Uh, we're ensuring that in our different political structure, we ensure that we are going to uh, have different opportunities and different um, uh, areas that they can be able to serve so that we increase the number of women, we increase the number of our youth, and we also increase the number of our PWZ. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. And the one presenting next, please note you have five more minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, we will submit to you our written proposal. I will simply summarize yes. uh, what we have on fidelity to political parties, coalitions, and the law on multi-party democracy. Our proposal is that we seek to strengthen individual parties as key uh, pillars for strong coalitions in Kenya. Secondly, that multipartism is a critical tool to the growth of democracy in Kenya. And thirdly, that the choice of belonging to any political party is a, enshrined in the Constitution, must be respected, and it must be strengthened. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Any other presentation? Uh, thank you. is that there is indeed law in place. There is the Political Parties Act that has established the management, the structure, and the role of political parties. It has indeed provided for situations where members are expected either to be within or without the provisions of their uh, constitution as at the party level. The Constitution of Kenya, at the same time, we are all aware, uh, mandates members under Article 38 the, the freedom to, 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 to politic and democracy. However, this was an issue that we have had uh, to re respond to, and uh, we are saying that in terms of what we can recommend as a, as a position, since we have the law, what is it then that we can do to make sure that this law is supporting the management of these political parties. And we have uh, proposed that education is going to be one of the key issues in terms of ensuring that proactive steps are taken for members to understand, for political parties also to understand how to manage their members so that we avoid accusations of interference with the management of political parties. Secondly, enhance the strengthening of internal party dispute resolution mechanism and make sure that proper structures are implemented and 
party organs are also made to operationalize so that if there is an issue, we can deal with it within the IDRM. Thirdly, political dialogue and democratic space is key. If we have this continuously, there will be no accusation of one party having interfered with another party's political structure. And lastly, legal reforms, where we are saying that policymakers should be able to consider reviewing and amending the existing laws where we feel there is a lacuna. And in this case, if there is a lacuna in terms of the political parties act, where we are saying at what point do we deem a member to have maybe uh, promoted the position of another political party, it should be clear so that members are allowed to exercise their democratic right and space and none is accused of having cannibalized any other political party. That is our position as Kinakwansa and we are saying Thank you, this thank commission you. can push also along those proposals. Thank, thank you, you, Senator. Lastly, Chair. Lastly. Yeah, yeah lastly. The last, yeah. There's a last one. Yeah. Um, last one. yeah, lastly, Chair, on the two issues about entrenching yeah, funds. One minute. Yes. Uh, how many minutes? One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> two more minutes, Chair. Uh, lastly, on the issue of entrenching funds into the constitution and establishment and entrenchment of state offices. Uh, Honorable Chairs, this is our position that we draw wisdom from the memorandum the President presented to Parliament. That is the position of Kenya Kwanzaa. We support the establishment and the entrenchment of the National uh, 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 Government Constituency Development Fund, National Government Affirmative Action Fund, and the Senate Oversight Fund. However, Chair, we would like to make a further submission on the same. Uh, Article 177 of the Constitution of Kenya establishes the position of the member of county assembly. The County Government Act gives the members of the county assembly various roles. In order for the county assembly's honorable chair to effectively carry out the above functions as enshrined in, their, in, the, in the County Government Act, we propose as Kenya Kwanda the establishment of a fund to be known World Development Fund, which shall empower the legislators to perform their functions of representation more effectively and keep them in touch with the pulse of their respective wards. Honorable Chair, it is important to note that the role of an MCA are similar to those of a, of a member of National Assembly, and therefore, if these privileges are to be given at the national level, they should be replicated to the county level. These funds will help the MCA's Honorable Chair to fulfill their promises and pledges they made during their uh, elections. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, we further suggest that uh, to achieve, this fund will achieve equalization across the country and can be a solution to the marginalized groups within the counties who are agitating for secession. Honorable members of the committee who would agree with me that the member of county assembly position is an incubation stage for nurturing and mentoring future leaders who will scale up in political leader, uh, uh, ladder of leadership. This fund will be very instrumental in ensuring this is achieved. We further uh, uh, submit that we have a ward equalization fund so that within the county setup, we again have an equalization fund to ensure that marginalized communities are catered for. Uh, we are further suggesting as Kwanza to have the county oversight fund, the same way a senator has been proposed to have an oversight fund to oversight the governors, huh, to play the oversight role. We are proposing, let us uh, build capacity for members of county assemblies. We've seen members of county assemblies being bought left, right, and center because they do not have a fund. That will make them autonomous from, uh, the, govern uh, from the governor. Lastly, on the issue of entrenchment of the, uh, uh, the two officers, the leader of opposition and the office of the prime cabinet secretary, we support, and especially as Kenya Kwanzaa, we want to affirm that we support the entrenchment of the leader of opposition. It is our considered view that Parliament should enact the legislation to establish the office of the leader of opposition. This is an important office in promoting inclusivity. We have repeatedly witnessed violence 
after every electoral cycle due to the perceived winner-takes-it-all scenario. Creation of this position will be a means to alleviate, uh, to alleviate the perennial problems, strengthening oversight and deepening democracy. Honorable Chair, we are conscious of the Bill of Rights as enshrined in the Constitution. We propose a legislation to regulate the right to demonstration and picketing Time. enshrined in Article 37. Thank Lastly, you, the, le the legislation should specifically address and provide mechanism to bar political leaders who lead violent demonstrations from vying from any further elective position. Further, the legislation should mandate the organizers of the demonstration to gazette the venue, time, and reason for picketing. The, the, the legislation should provide measures that will ensure the leaders and organizers of violent demonstrations which may occasion destruction of property and loss of life to be held liable. These will encourage sanity and order in our political class. That is our submission as Kenya Council. Thank you, thank you. SG, I think you're done and thank you very much. I only want to ask you one question. Yeah. In the case of the office of the uh, of official of the leader of opposition, should that person sit in the Senate or in the National Assembly? Uh, for purposes, or outside? No, just, just, just not down, just not, not down, question. not down. And I've got a follow-up question. Uh, so say for the for the about two or so words that you uttered, I hope you could listen to me. Okay. SG yeah. can, can yes, listen yes. to to Andai. Yes, I was getting worried because uh, in the memorandum that you alluded to, that was sent to Parliament, and in your written memorandum here. Is that written what is what is this? <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's yours. No, let's be orderly. Okay, so we ignore this one. Okay. Sorry, Chair. You know, uh, our staff have circulated a, a memo. It bears no. your name. Uh, I, started, I started by saying we do not have a written memorandum. We will do oral submissions. But what is this? Yeah. And, and, and this was occasioned by the contents of your letter. You told us to come fair, and fair make enough, fair oral enough. presentation. Fair, fair enough. So we ignore, fair enough. So we ignore this. Ignore. Yes. Okay. We take this as a strange document. Very strange. Very strange. That found its way here strangely. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I was, I was actually going to ask you, why are you not as emphatic on the position of, on the proposed position of Prime Cabinet Secretary? as you are on the position of leader of your position. Uh, it is curious that even this document, which I have now refused to, I, I will not now refer to, you seem not to be uh, emphasizing the creation of that office, contrary to perceptions that have been in the public domain. Could it be as a result of the fears? No, that, no, relax. Could it be as a result of the fears that uh, from some quarters, that this office, if created, or if entrenched in the Constitution, is going to water down the power and influence of the office of the Deputy President. And could this perhaps be the cause of the incessant anti-dialogue outbursts out there? Finally, finally, what is your take on the issue of the tax, taxes, the ta taxes which were brought about by the finance Act. And very finally, Omoko Milemba, if I had you right, I think this is the, the SG of Fort Kenya. That you support, that, that you support. Chair, I'm the SG of Fort Okay, fine. I was referring to my friend, the SG of Fort Kenya. Yes. That you support the strengthening of political parties. Okay? I suppose within and without the coalitions. What is your take on the clamor for collapsing of political parties to form bigger entities? Yeah. Very good question. Uh, Honorable Chair, on the issue of uh, the leader of opposition, we propose that he sits in, government, in, uh, in National Assembly uh, so that he can be able to 
uh, oversight the, the government ably. Second, on the issue of uh, being emphatic on the entrenchment of the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary, I think it, first it was because of time. Second, is a matter of semantics. We started by saying that we draw our wisdom from the contents encapsulated in the memorandum from the President to the National Assembly. So whatever the contents are encapsulated in that memorandum, we share the same wisdom. Uh, Chair, that, that memorandum doesn't have the proposal to entrench the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary. It's not there. Yeah. It's not there. Yeah. Which memorandum? The one that was sent to the President to, 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 the, to the National Assembly. Or oh, whichever way, we as uh, Secretary General uh, has said, uh, we strongly support the entrenchment of the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary into the Constitution. And we had uh, an array of notes on this. But of course, uh, due to time, we may have not uh, done so much. But we stand for it. And this will uh, help in, uh, to create a liaison, a supervision, which is a pivotal role within the Cabinet Secretary and the Cabinet. So we strongly stand for it and we support it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our position on the, on the parties is that uh, we propose the strengthening of in individual parties as key pillars uh, to strong coalitions. Okay. Anything outside that uh, proposal is a clamor which I don't understand. <laughs> so we, we, we stand for that, and nobody is outside that. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it question? might help SG to make a comment on that, yeah. the, the political party position yes. of uh, UDA yes. in regards to that yes. issue. Can you uh, take it together with my question? Yes, yes. So that he... Yes, 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 yes uh, Senator Arun. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you to the presentation from Kenya Kwanzaa. Um, in the presentations and submissions that have been made to us on the particular topic of audit of the 2022 a presidential election, I heard you say that the position of uh, Kenya Kwanzaa is that this matter is closed and done with in the sense that it was concluded at the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. However, there are people who have come before us and in their presentation, they have said that is a political view in response to a political question raised by Azimio. Because they and our understanding, which I want to believe is the same matter that you're responding to, is that they are contesting the election result. However, many people, including the church, I don't know if you had a, ch a chance to listen to NCCK presented, so many people that have come before us, have told us, have a broader view of this issue. Look at it as an audit of our electoral process, which results are just part and parcel of that there is a bigger perspective through which you can have a view to making our electoral processes better. What are the issues that uh, have arisen, matters of contestation over every electoral cycle, and how that can better prepare us for the net electoral cycle. If, it was, if that was made to be your understanding of what an audit will be, will you still maintain the same view that that matter is concluded or you would agree with those that are requesting this committee to have a broader view of this matter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chair, before, okay. before, before you go, we, have, we still have comments. Uh, Chair, I think I want to go next. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Kenya Kwanza, for your presentations. My simple question is, what is your take on these errand elected ofi officers or members of either county assembly or even the National Assembly who are errand and they don't even conform with the party, uh, maybe constitution or ideologies? What is your take on them? And secondly, uh, Madam Senator, it's on the two-third gender rule. You gave us almost a blanket a statement about the government or the parliament having not conformed to implementing. 
but I wanted you to be a bit specific. Do you have any specific measures and ways which we can use to, to get to this two-third gender rule? Like other parties have been coming here, uh, the public service was here with their team. They gave us suggestions. Gidu was here. He also mentioned even about scrubbing the women rep seat and maybe creating something else. Do you have anything specific that you can recommend to this committee? Thank you. My uh, chair is just a comment. Yes. Uh, they might choose to answer it in a different way, but uh, because also this committee is co conscious that part of us are Kenya Kwanzaa and the other parties as Mio. I think the fact that we have, we have participated in our full element of Pio and I is testimony that what you call outbursts are just opinions and that we continue to, com to support this process fully, including its outcomes. Thank you. Uh, please respond and we'll give you three minutes to just respond quickly to those issues. Chair, we will try to respond in three minutes, questions that were asked in nine minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> okay. We, will, we will abide, Chair. Chair, I will start on the issue of uh, whether the, the, the issue of whether we agree that we should audit the process or the elections. Our position is that we can open up on the issue of auditing the process. And that is a mandate that is given to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And therefore, I think that goes without any opposition that as Kenya Kwanzaa, we agree. And since we are a democratic country, we can audit the process. We look into areas which we can improve as a country because elections are supposed to be transparent and uh, uh, in, a, in a manner that people can be pa participating in the formulation of the rules of uh, the election. Second, on the issue that uh, you raised about strengthening of political parties, I want to strongly agree with the Secretary General of the Ford Kenya that let us strengthen political parties because we fought so much in this country. We shed blood to achieve the multi-party democracy. And therefore, our position is that let us strengthen political parties. But the big question is, how do you strengthen your political party? You strengthen by recruiting members. So if, in an instance, you can recruit members from a particular political party to a point whereby that political party is no longer viable, you can decide to take up the entire membership of a political party and bring to your... So strengthening, you must strengthen your political party by recruiting members. And that is our position, that let us strengthen, let us compete, and that is multi-democracy uh, that we fought for. Uh, on the issue of errant MPs going against their party positions, I think we already have a legislative framework on that. The Political Parties Act is very clear. It's just a matter of enactment. So, uh, Honorable Wambilianga, enforcement. Enforcement. enforcement it's already I mean. enacted. Enforcement. So, it's, it's just a matter of enforcement. So, uh, that has already been provided for in the Political Parties Act and other related legislation. Let me conclude, SG. One uh, minute before conclude. he concludes, Chair. Yes. yes. On the issue of uh, political parties, we as a coalition are very much aware about. Uh, uh, where we came from in terms of the one-party state. And like we as I said correctly, we want to strengthen the political parties. And uh, let me further indicate that we also, this is what I wanted to bring out, that also collisions, we also need to strengthen development of collisions that can actually purpose to drive a certain, uh, a certain area. And that's the experience even we had in America. What you now call the Strong Parties of America is a whole history of ideologies of small conglomerations that came together to form what they are to today. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. I just yes, want to, to know from you, uh, this is a national dialogue uh, initiative. Yes. And you are sitting uh, on different divides. Why can't you mix? Thank you. Uh, food for thought. That's food for thought. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think we, uh, it, we, we, we will be ungrateful if we left this uh, sitting without congratulating uh, the committee. You've made Kenya proud because in the history of Kenya, this is the first time you are seeing 
uh, different divides, political divides, sitting together, having a dialogue. And I think this is the Kenya we want to see. Thank the you. other Kenya where we came from, we don't want to go back into those trenches. We want to see a Kenya which is united. Thank and you. I suggest, Honorable Chair, that in the forthcoming Mashuja Day, you guys should be celebrated. We should give you accolades for bringing Kenya together. Now we have a peaceful country, and we want to encourage that we continue with that. Thank you. We appreciate. We appreciate. Thank you. Thank you, Kenya Kwanza. We appreciate you and your presentation. Sasante. The next... Uh, Federation of Kenya. Federation, eh? Federation of Kenya Employers? Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. Federation, and then next after Federation of Kenya Employers.